A sharp, piercing sound echoed through the church. Immediately, my cheek began to burn with pain. Wait, did I just get slapped? How dare you lay hands on my man? A woman yelled. But whatever, I don't need a man who plays around like this. I'll give him to you. The woman who slapped me said, laughing in disbelief. My name is Amy. At 26, I'm working as an office worker. I've been dating my boyfriend, Kevin, for three years now, and I'm starting to wonder if it's about time. About time for what? Well, of course, I mean marriage. I've heard that if you date for too long, you might become complacent and miss your opportunity to tie the knot. Yet if I keep waiting as is, who knows when we'll ever get married. So, I figure now is the time to speak up. The days of silent waiting are over. In this day and age, I think it's perfectly fine for women to make the first move. There's even a term for it, a reverse proposal. So one day, after work, we met up and went to a ramen shop. There, we agreed to get married with a simple exchange, how about now? Sounds good. Thinking it's a bland proposal? Well, yes, there was a time when I dreamt of something more. Like a beautiful scenic viewpoint at night. Or at a fancy restaurant. Or even a big bouquet of flowers from him. But after three years together, those dreams tend to fade. I don't know about others, but I'm pretty pragmatic. Marriage is a turning point in life and a new beginning. I'm the type who would rather focus on the upcoming married life rather than the proposal itself. Anyway, the point is, we finally decided to get married. It's a cause for celebration. I thought Kevin might not be too keen or that he might leave all the wedding planning to me. But to my surprise, he was quite enthusiastic about the ceremony. I want to be the star of the show at least once in my life, he said. As for me, I'm equally excited, and it's great to see him so motivated. Since we'll be taking time off work for our honeymoon after the wedding, I'm cramming in work to make sure I can leave without any worries. Naturally, this makes us very busy. But since I don't want to compromise on the planning, we need to find time to discuss it. We're even sacrificing our weekends, it's just that hectic. Today, again, without a glance at the beautiful weather outside, Kevin and I were holed up in our room, talking things through. A date? What's that? Is it tasty? Until the wedding, we're a team aiming for the success of a major project, our wedding. There's no time for dates. In this fighting spirit, we were reviewing estimates for wedding venues when I heard Kevin say, not again, and I looked up. Frowning at his cell phone screen, Kevin seemed rather annoyed. What's up? I asked. Just an old friend being overly persistent with their messages, Kevin replied. Someone you're not close with? Uh, yeah. It's been years since we drifted apart. We lost touch around the time we graduated high school. How do they have your contact info then? A mutual friend from high school gave it out. Oh no, that's really not cool. I got pretty mad, and they apologized, but it was already too late. Why not just block the number? I tried, but this person just makes new accounts to get in touch. That's kinda creepy. It's creeping me out too. This sounds like stalker level stuff, doesn't it? So, who is this person? A man with a thick beard or something? Are beards your pet peeve, Amy? I'm glad mine isn't that thick. I'd still like you even if you had a thick beard, Kevin. Oh, you. Why are you blushing? We're getting married soon, you know. Even so. We've been dating for three years, but he's still pretty shy. Well, that's one of the things I fell for, his purity. But if I ever said that, he'd probably turn red, so I kept it to myself. So, who is this person? Well, uh, it's not a guy. Oh, a woman? I'm not the type of woman to make a big fuss just because a woman is contacting my soon-to-be husband. Of course, if they seemed overly friendly, that'd be a different story, but it seems like he's not comfortable with her, so there's no reason for me to make a fuss. But it's natural to be curious, isn't it? Going to the lengths of making new accounts just to reach him. So, who is she? She's my ex. Wow. Didn't expect it to be his ex. But, it was over between us even before high school graduation. We broke up because she cheated on me when we were both too busy studying for the exams. Really? Yes. Since graduation, I've not been in touch with her at all. Until she recently started to message me again, I had even forgotten she existed. I see. Judging by his reaction, he didn't seem to be lying. He's probably telling the truth. Then why is she contacting him? And so persistently. I announced our wedding to a group chat on Facebook, because I couldn't meet everyone in person. I see. That's when she started sending me messages directly. 
What did the messages say? You're better off not knowing. How could he say that and expect me not to be curious? I swiftly grabbed his phone out of his hand. Maybe it was an invasion of his privacy, but I had a right to know. Maybe he understood my determination, as he didn't try to take the phone back. So, without hesitation, I decided to read the messages. What the hell is this? Indeed, the content was something I wish he hadn't shown me. The one named Holly seems to be opposed to getting married, starting with isn't it a bit early for marriage, and from there, it's an onslaught of messages. You're bound to fail, you should quit. Are you just being taken advantage of because you're rushing into marriage? Is your partner only after your money? Marriage is hell, you know, she goes on, adding, I'm the only one who understands Kevin. Understands Kevin, as in from high school? How can she say that without even knowing what he's like now? The worst part was when she insisted on seeing a photo of me, who is supposed to be his bride, and when he refused, she assumed, she must be ugly for sure. Even if I weren't particularly attractive, he chose me. Does she think a relationship with someone chosen for their looks would last? What matters is what's inside. Man, she sounds intense. Yeah. She was pretty harsh back in the day too, but she wasn't this bad. Didn't you break up with her because she cheated on you? Yeah. She was cheating on me with one of my friends. They were, well, yeah, behind the school building. Seeing him dodge the question and his face darken was more than enough to understand. Witnessing the scene, especially between a friend and his girlfriend, must have been a big shock. Did you distance yourself from that male friend too? Of course. I didn't speak to him until we graduated, and I haven't contacted him since. I have no idea what he's up to now. At least, he's distancing himself from your ex-girlfriend, right? With how often she contacts me, I'd assume she's moved on by now. All of this might be chalked up to youthful indiscretion, but that's why the shock was so big. Unlike adults, the love of high school kids is pure and unforgettable. I understand that. Well, I didn't have a boyfriend during my adolescence. He still seems to be receiving messages from his ex-girlfriend, but he's not trying to hide it, and I've stopped worrying about it. Just when I was getting busy and starting to forget about the existence of his ex-girlfriend, our wedding day finally arrived. The church attached to the hotel where the reception is taking place. I, the nervous bride, arm in arm with my equally tense father, walk down the aisle. Ah, everyone is paying attention to me. This is probably a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Caught up in this strange elation, I'm in a good mood. With my spirits high, I now link arms with Kevin. The foreign pastor adds to the atmosphere. And then, right at the moment when every bride's father would want to close his eyes, bang. The church doors swing open with force. Eh? I'm sure I wasn't the only one who said that. Kevin, standing at the front, and various voices from the seats of the attendees. As everyone's attention turns, standing at the violently open door is a woman we don't recognize. Eh, who? An unknown woman. Neither a co-worker nor a friend. A truly unfamiliar woman. The moment she saw Kevin, who was as confused as I was, her eyes popped out in surprise, wide open. Seeing Kevin like that, I understood. Could it be, Holly? When I ask in a whisper that only he can hear, he nods slightly. Ah, I see. So, is this going to be like that famous movie scene? She couldn't have come to steal him away, could she? With a grim expression, the ex-girlfriend marches up with heavy footsteps. No one steps in to stop her, too taken aback by the situation. Taking advantage of this, the ex-girlfriend gets closer and closer to us. I can't imagine Kevin going with his ex-girlfriend. But, against my better judgment, my body moved. I spread my arms wide in front of him, standing my ground, refusing to let her take him. And then, no. My scream and the shrill sound echoed almost simultaneously. Huh? What followed was an eerie silence. Uh, what just happened? For a moment, I didn't understand what was happening. However, the heat spreading across my cheek immediately after made me realize the situation. Amy, are you okay? A moment later, Kevin peered into my face. Looking at his worried expression, I understood that something was really wrong. When I hurriedly touched my cheek, it felt hot, as if burned. Hmph. That's what you get for touching another woman's man. Still holding my cheek, I saw a figure standing defiantly in front of me. It was Kevin's ex-girlfriend. Holly, who had cheated on him and broken up with him in high school. She stood there, smirking and snorting with a satisfied look. Was I slapped? 
Wait, did she just slap me? Why? What for? Holly! What the hell are you doing? In my confusion, I heard Kevin shouting from beside me. At that point, the wedding venue burst into chaos. What the hell, Holly? What are you doing here on their big day? Running towards us, shouting, were Kevin's friends from his student days. People who knew about his ex-girlfriend. The ex-girlfriend tried to ward off the people trying to grab her, shrugged them off, and shouted, shut up. I was just giving this thief a taste of her own medicine. Ah, uh, thief? What is she talking about? As I was wondering, the ex-girlfriend looked at me with a smug face. You poor thing. You didn't even know he was two-timing you. What, two-timing? What does she mean? You heard from Kevin that we broke up, right? Uh, yes. I heard that you two hadn't been in touch since high school. Indeed, the ex-girlfriend snorted with laughter. And then, that's all a lie, she screamed. A lie? That's right. Kevin and I never broke up. We've been together since graduation, all this time. What? What does she mean? And Kevin just stood there, pale and silent. Could it be true? Was he really two-timing me? Seeing my lost for words, the ex-girlfriend laughed sarcastically. Poor you, getting married without even knowing that. But I feel even more sorry for myself. I've been with him for such a long time and now he's been swept away by another woman. Swept away? Well, isn't that right? Kevin and I have been together since high school, long before you. So, you're the one who made a move on someone else's man. The sudden revelation left me standing in shock. I couldn't say anything. Laughing triumphantly at me, the ex-girlfriend said. Well, I don't need a two-timing man like him, so I'm giving him to you. She laughed out loud. It was then, when my vision was blurred with tears. Hold on a second. A deep voice drowned out the laughter of his ex-girlfriend. It was Kevin. His head was down, making it hard to see his expression, but after three years of dating, I could tell. Kevin was angry. Normally, he was incredibly kind and gentle, seldom showing his anger. What's the matter, cheating man? Could it be that she doesn't understand his anger? Despite dating since high school, can't she realize his anger? The true nature of the slight discomfort that could be faintly felt would soon be revealed. When did I ever cheat? Huh? You're still trying to play innocent? The one cheating is you. With a loud voice that drowned out the smirking voice of his ex-girlfriend, he yelled. You asked me for advice, didn't you? You were unsure about which of the two men you're cheating with to marry. Both are my best friends, and I just scolded you for messing around. Eh? It wasn't just me who was surprised by his statement. What are you talking about, trying to excuse yourself with such words? At that time, you said that if you hinder my happiness, you'll hinder my happiness too. Is this it? Are you trying to ruin the ceremony and hurt the woman I love? Are you satisfied with this? Do you think this will make you happy? What? What? What's that all about? Kevin, have you been meeting with your ex? When I timidly asked the fact inferred from the conversation, he looked at me with a surprised face. The face he had been showing towards his ex-girlfriend in anger turned into a sad face the moment he saw me. I'm sorry, I kept it a secret because I didn't want to worry you. She said she had something she really needed to talk about and asked me to meet her just once. I see. I was somewhat shocked by the news. But, I haven't done anything wrong. Just as I said now, this person has been dating the person she cheated on in high school, but she's actually dating another classmate as well. She sent me a message about it, and I couldn't keep quiet, so I agreed to meet and discuss it. You should have told me. Isn't it more suspicious if you don't say anything? Speaking of which, he's obviously down. That's true. I'm really sorry for that. But when I see your happy face talking about the wedding, I didn't want to worry you even a little. I think it can't be helped if you hate me. I won't hate you. But I wish you had told me. We're going to be husband and wife after all. As I say this, he opens his eyes wide, then quickly turns teary-eyed, my husband. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. While crying, my husband hugged me gently. But it didn't end happily there. What? What do you mean you're trying to end this on a good note? Don't let this man fool you. He was really cheating. Whether to believe my ex-girlfriend or my husband, I've made up my mind. I've decided to marry this man. I won't be swayed by the words of my ex-girlfriend. When I glared at my ex-girlfriend, 
she retreated under my spirit. At that moment, a shout rang out, so you're here, Holly. What next, really? Just as I was starting to calm down, is there going to be another scene? Looking over, there stood a man at the church entrance, someone I'd never seen before. Uh, Alex, why are you here? One of my buddies attending the wedding told me you were causing a scene here. I thought you had given up on our conversation and ran out. What are you doing? I have nothing to talk to you about. I'm just bored of hanging out with you for so long. It's just too dull. A man and a woman were arguing loudly. When I asked my husband Kevin in a low voice, who is that, he looked troubled and explained, he's the guy who stole my ex-girlfriend from me. So, in other words, the man called Alex was the one my husband's ex-girlfriend had cheated with during high school. If they were in a relationship all this time, even if it started with infidelity, wouldn't it be considered a pure love story? That's what one would think just hearing that. However, the ex-girlfriend declared, I think Bob is a better man after all. I've decided to choose him. Bob? Who is he? He's a friend from high school. He moved away for work and couldn't make it to the ceremony today. He just sent a congratulatory message. Why is he suddenly in the picture? Bob is the other man the ex-girlfriend was two-timing with. When they ran into each other by chance, she lied that she had broken up with Alex long ago and managed to start a relationship with Bob. Because Bob was far away, it seems there was no chance for him and Alex to run into each other. Also, Alex and Bob were not particularly close and were not in touch, so the truth didn't come out. Oh, I see. So, it wasn't a pure love story at all. Although I do despise Alex for stealing my ex-girlfriend from me, I don't have any hard feelings about it now. I had no intention of contacting him and didn't plan to invite him to the wedding, but as long as he's doing well, that's all I care about. However, if she was two-timing him with Bob, that's a different story. I was pissed off and gave my ex-girlfriend a piece of my mind. So, is that why she caused all this drama today? Probably. She knew neither Alex nor Bob would be at the wedding. Even though she must have known it would come out eventually, she has always been shallow and short-sighted. Anyway, it was only a matter of time before her secret would be revealed once she consulted you. That's why she's short-sighted. Exactly. A quick glance revealed that the ex-girlfriend and Alex were still squabbling. Anyway, I said, excuse me, could you please leave now? I have no intention of cancelling the ceremony and I'd like to continue as soon as possible. A feast awaits me at the reception. What? You're planning to continue the ceremony? The ex-girlfriend glared at me with an intense look, but of course, I am. I am very happy right now, you see. What did you just say? It seems you're a serial cheater. Were you hoping to get involved with my husband as well? Why would I? No, no, I wasn't thinking. Alex seemed surprised by the slip of the tongue from the ex-girlfriend. What? You weren't satisfied just two timing with Bob, you were also after Kevin who's getting married. No, it's not like that. Who would want a man like him? Either way, you were two timing with Bob. I've had enough. Originally, I took you from Kevin, so I thought I should at least make you happy by marrying you as atonement, but I've lost that feeling now. What do you mean atonement? You just don't want to admit that you betrayed your best friend. Yes, that's right. I'm the worst. But you, flitting to another man while you have a boyfriend, you're the worst too. Back in high school, you told me that Kevin was abusing you, that you were suffering, that you needed help. And I believed you. I was stunned. It seems the ex-girlfriend is a pathological liar. She's always telling lies that suit her convenience. Kevin, I don't expect to be forgiven, but let me say this. I'm really sorry for what happened back then. While I was in disbelief, Alex sincerely apologized with a serious look on his face. My husband laughed and said, it's okay. I'm happy, really happy right now. Is that so? Alex, who responded, wore a somewhat melancholic smile, took hold of his ex-girlfriend Holly and said, stop making a fool of yourself, Holly. Let's go, and led her away. Wait a minute. I'm not finished talking. Kevin, when you get tired of that woman, contact me. I'm the only one who understands you. Until the very end, she said ridiculous things and left. What was that all about? Those of us left behind in the aftermath. Someone muttered under their breath, surely echoing the thoughts of everyone present. After that, the ceremony resumed without further interruption and concluded without a hitch. We did finish it, yes. 
I know it might be surprising, but we did. It was only natural. After all, we had been looking forward to it. A full course meal we had agonized over choosing. In the end, I, the bride, was too busy to eat much of it. The fact that I couldn't eat the meal might have made me cry more than any congratulatory speeches from friends or letters of thanks to my parents. As for Holly, I heard from my husband's friend what happened afterward. Alex had contacted Bob, who had even taken the day off work to be there, and the three of them had a discussion. As a result, she was rejected by both men. It seemed both had intended to marry her until they found out about her two-timing. Naturally, that cooled their feelings. Why me? What did I do wrong? Don't leave me! She cried and wailed, having conveniently changed her tune after telling Alex she was leaving him in the chapel. Of course, both men ignored her and left. In the end, she clung to men till the end and never showed any remorse. After that, she started reaching out to my husband and every man she knew, it seemed. I'm a pitiful woman, she pleaded, but no one paid any attention to her. Eventually, she was removed from the group chat, and her messages stopped. I heard she's been caught up with some bad guy and is working in a dubious place. My husband said in his usual calm manner. In our marriage, we have one rule, no secrets ever. In living our married life, that's our one and only rule. Thinking about it, I really wanted to eat that feast. That hotel restaurant apparently has a similar full course meal, though not exactly the same. Shall we go eat there? Really? But it's probably expensive. We got some extra income, so we're good. Let's go. Yay, I'm so excited. Our married life is smooth sailing with my sweet husband. The trouble at the wedding is just a funny story now. So, what's this extra income? Uh, I may have tried my luck at the casino. Haha, uh, what about no secrets? Yeah, you're right. My husband gave a wry smile, and I returned a full one, hugging his arm.